the aim uh, of the session really is to talk you through the project, our aims and objectives, how to submit uh, and the call for entries, tell you a little bit about the selectors uh, so that you have a sense of the project um, and how that works. So this is the first images of the install in 2023, what, looking one way, uh, so a snapshot uh, of the exhibition in 2023 as it was presented at Trinity Boy Wharf. And the project is hosted, I'm talking on the Drawing Project at UK channel from the University of Dundee. We're both partners in the project um, and Trinity Boy Wharf is where the exhibition is hosted and they support uh, quite a lot of the exhibition uh, practicalities and Trinity Boy Wharf Trust is the current sponsor. Parker Harris are our project manager uh, who handle the submissions and uh, collection of work. So I'll talk you through all of that in one second. So a really big welcome. Um, the Trinity Boy Wharf Drawing Prize is aims to promote talent and excellence in contemporary drawing through an annual exhibition, which is an open call, and through that to promote the discipline of drawing, present an exhibition of current drawing practice, through, an, through associated exhibitions and programmes to provide a forum to gain knowledge and understanding about drawing and people who are working within the discipline. So who's drawing, what are they drawing, how do we define a drawing, where are they drawing and, and what's the conversation and dialogue through that. And the aim is to situate that discourse of how drawing is used within an educational context. We're housed in an educational institution but one of my priorities and prerogatives is actually how do we give permission, how do we promote, how do we enable and facilitate and celebrate people drawing. So let me just move on to the next slide. So just a little bit of history and context. It's supported by the Trinity Boy Wharf Trust. This is an image of Trinity Boy Wharf, which is a cultural quarter in East London. Um, which has historic buildings, the last lighthouse in London, hence the logo. Um, so it has historic buildings and also a container city where um, there are creative studios and workspaces, creative businesses, ranging from the ENO, English National Opera Workshops, to uh, the King's Foundation diploma programmes in art and design and also in textiles. Uh, and there is also a school on the site, a small school. Um, so lots of different creative cultural hubs. And this is the chain store, which is used largely for events uh, and has a parallel building, which is the one the exhibition was in, where they present exhibitions and other projects. Sorry, let me just go back one second. Just to say it's been running since 1994. It was started uh, in uh, an educational institution and has run annually since 1996. It's had different sponsors throughout that time uh, who fund the exhibition project, the awards, and all that, the material around that. Um, and uh, those sponsors have been different across the years, hence it's had different names since 1994. It was known as the Derwent Open Drawing Exhibition because Derwent uh, sponsored it in its very first year. And then it was just known as the Cheltenham Open Drawing Exhibition, where it was originated from, with support from multiple charities and benefactors, and then became the Jerwood Drawing Prize with 17 years of Jerwood funding uh, before Trinity Boy Wolf Trust became the main benefactor seven years ago. So it's an open exhibition. It's selected by an annually appointed panel of experts in drawing who choose drawings for the exhibition on the basis of the work submitted alone. So they look at all of the drawings. They don't have names of artists. They don't have titles and media. They don't have the metadata presented to them. Um, they're really tasked with thinking about what's a good drawing in a very objective sense as a dialogue between what's presented to them and between their dialogue as three, a panel of three, selectors looking at the work. So you can see some of the panels we've had previously on the images on the left with Charlotte Mullins, Kate Brindley, and Michael Craig Martin, David DeBose and Michael Simpson, and Helen Legg in the bottom photograph. 
it changes each year and that means there's a freshness to the exhibition so some drop artists may get in more than once um on different years they can be rewarded differently uh, and in different years as well because the panel is different and it is their ex their choice for the exhibition and their choice for the awards so the we collect all the drawings in so they see work in the real and we think that's quite important we know it has cha practical challenges but it is quite important because drawing doesn't convey very particularly well through digital images um, i've been on the other end of selection panels choosing it's not horrendous it's not a huge problem but it does have make a considerable difference and we've been talking that through with selectors and artists um, to sustain that physical submission <clears throat> so that we see all of the works all at once uh, and can make choices uh, based on that uh, particular experience. So the exhibition is presented at Trinity Boy Wharf each year. From, it will be from the 2nd of October uh, to the 16th of October this year before it goes on tour across the UK, potentially outside the UK as well. Uh, we announced the awards on the 3rd of October uh, with a big opening that all of the artists think, or drawing practitioners included in the exhibition as well as the VIP guest list are invited to and we produce the fully illustrated publication so this is last year's of a 256 page fully illustrated publication with uh, material information about each, art, each work in the show, information about the maker of each drawing in the show and text by both myself as the with the oversight of the exhibition project, but also the selectors. Um, we run engagement programs. This year we'll be running a drawing symposium on the Thursday, immediately after the op opening. Uh, partly because we're celebrating 30 years, uh, this will be the 30th exhibition uh, this year. We're in our 31st year as an organisation. We have awards and the awards are there both to highlight, reward, promote, Excellent. They also encourage people to submit. It's very open uh, in terms of who gets the awards. That is, we the selectors choose the drawings. They see every drawing at least once in the reel. Um, so it comes round again. We lay out the work um, so that people can see it rather than it walk them by when they might have a slippage of focus or concentration. Um, and then they whittle down to their nominated choices for the awards. Uh, and they choose the first prize and the second prize before they choose the student award. The Working Drawing Award is announced at the same time, but it has a separate panel and a separate process. So we'll come to that in a moment. And this is everyone arriving from the boat because there's river transport to the opening from Westminster. Uh, you can get there in different ways, but it is on uh, a wharf uh, and we charter uh, a boat for that. The call for entries is international. Uh, it's currently open and it's open until the 12th of June for the main exhibition, the Trinity Boy Wharf Drawing Prize, exploring what drawing is uh, in its domain, in every possibility and open to all. And those are where the three awards first prize, second prize and student awards sit. Um, and for this, you are registering that you're submitting and paying the submission fee uh, online by the 12th of June. You don't need to provide us with titles. I might like you to provide us with size because we'll be collecting them in across the country. Uh, and the Working Drawing Award, which has a separate panel and process for different reasons I'll come to, is open until the 19th of June. And that is a a process where you upload the digital images uh, and there's a reason for that I'll explain. So the call for entries is currently open. You should start to see posters and other images appearing <clears throat> around the world um, and everything will take you to the Art Ops portal which is managed by Parker Harris for the submission. There are two portals this year, one for the Trinity Boy Wharf Drawing Prize for the main award and that is the second one for the Working Drawing Award. So you can enter both. There's nothing to stop you submitting work to both. And last year we did have a drawing that was submitted to both and included in both. 
which is why you'll see sometimes on the exhibition publicity there are 123 drawings, which is the truth, truthful number. Uh, whereas actually 24 drawings make the exhibition because one was selected for both. <clears throat> so anyway, the, the key thing is that the, and Fiona will drop the link into the chat, I'm sure, um, that there are entry portals. There is a website for the 24 World Drawing Prize where all of the information about the history of the project, who's selected it, who's been awarded of prizes, not everybody who's been in the show because that's the next stage of our work. Um, but it also provides the link to the portals for submission and the Drawing Project UK website also does the same. And you can see there are, the information is set out there, the rules and guidelines are set out there, frequently asked questions are set out there, and there are the links to everything, including to the information about collection centres, and there's also a guide for international submissions. The work is once you've indicated that you're putting in and you've decided whether you're putting one, two or three works uh, into the main award, uh, there is a set of collection centres. And if you're coming in through the Working Drawing Award and the work is invited to be in the show, then you'll also submit through a collection centre so that we can have it all together for photography. That's why the Working Drawing comes in, but the rest of it comes in uh, in order to be able to see the work. We practice groupage, so it's about trying to have a spine across the UK where work comes to. Um, so there's a collection centre in Wales, Northern Ireland, a uh, collection centre in Scotland, which is in Dundee. Uh, and then we have two collection centres in London, one at Trinity Boy Wharf itself, one at which is in the southwest London, which I think is in Kingston. It's on the uh, pack in the portal. And then we have collection <coughs> centres across the southwest, uh, up into the centre of the UK. So we're not covering absolutely everywhere, but what we hope is that we've got centres that can pull work together or that people can get together to get work to them. And we anticipate that the international submissions will come in by mail or courier and they will also come into um, the University of Dundee because we have a reception sitting here for a period of time where they can receive work um, and deal with everything coming in and collect all of that work together because it's a collection centre taking work to London anyway. So well, I'm sure there will be questions around this. So let's get to that at the end. Here you can see how the selection is set out. Um, so literally work is spread out. This, these are all at the later stages of selection because we're very careful not to expose work that's not been included in the show. We, we feel that that's part and parcel of our trust, uh, our trusted relationship with artists is that people feel they can submit things. It's seen by an expert panel, it's seen by us, but actually, we only present what actually is uh, included for the exhibition to the public. We have amazing people who put in. We have people who have no experience. All of those works jostle together. Um, and really, it is chosen on the basis of the work. So all sorts of extraordinary things happen within this process, uh, which is a great celebration, a great way to see a diverse range of drawing. The selectors this year uh, for the Trinity Boy Wolf Drawing Prize include, as it usually does, uh, uh, although I noticed there were two years early on when we didn't, an artist. It's an artist-run project. Um, and for me, drawing is absolutely critical in terms of both education, but also in terms of practice uh, and in all sorts of ways, through ideation, through documentation, through communication, expression, and as uh, art right and artwork in its own right, as much as a process. Um, so the selectors are Mary Evans, uh, who's an artist with a national and international reputation. She studied at Goldsmiths and at the Rikes Academy in Amsterdam, and her practice is centred on social, political, geographical and historical frameworks of the diaspora. Uh, and she uses drawing through collage, cutting, 
um, and various ways to make large site-specific work. But Mary is also the director of the Slade School of Fine Art. Um, she has a fantastic international profile, exhibiting uh, most recently a solo show at uh, Zeitzmucker in Cape Town in South Africa, uh, and also with uh, Windrush Portraits uh, at the John Hansel Gallery in Southampton. So she's a mature artist, great educator, uh, lots of uh, things to and experience to bring. Gary Sangster is an Australian curator who is based currently in the UK, uh, who has worked as a, an art education curator, writer, academic, and museum director in Australia, New Zealand, and the USA, as well as the UK. Uh, and he brings vast experience curatorially. Um, at the moment, we're lucky that he works on a freelance volunteer basis with Drawing Projects UK to support its development. Uh, and he will bring that international dimension to the curatorial focus uh, for the exhibition this year. Jennifer Scott, who is director of uh, Dulwich Picture Gallery in London, uh, has been the director there now for seven years uh, and is producing a fantastic contemporary programme alongside a historic programme in what was the first gallery in London, purpose-built public art gallery. Um, so Jenny, again, brings fantastic experience. All three bring a real passion for drawing, contemporary art, and all sorts of ways that drawing might be used. So they're the three people who will select work. Um, and the submission and selection process for this is that you can enter up to three drawings. They're registered on the online portal, and they're registered by the 12th of June by five o'clock so that we've got time to process and work out the logistics around the collection centres. You will say which collection centre you want to use on the portal so that we know where the work is coming in. There is an entry fee which is a standard fee uh, for submission uh, for all works coming in with also with a student uh, special fee rate which is because of our heritage in education and facilitating that offer to students and encouraging students both to draw, but also to submit their drawing within this. And I would say that students fare very well in the exhibition and the awards uh, as much as professional artists. So it's a completely equitable platform. Uh, all works are viewed anonymously in the reel. They're selected solely on the images without reference to their maker or other information. This is about reading, but that's the only word I can find this morning, reading drawings, understanding, responding to them in all the tacit ways that we respond to the trace of making, the way that the drawing is made, whatever form that takes, whatever medium that takes. And everybody will be notified by the 19th of July about the outcome of their submission. Works that are not included will be returned to collection centres. So again, trying to minimise and support the submission process. The Drawing Award, for which we don't yet have the poster this year, it will be shortly uh, printed this week, uh, is it aims to look at uh, drawing within uh, the role of drawing, I would say, within architecture, within design, within making of all kinds, planning and ideation processes. It's it's a sub-question within the bigger question about what's a drawing, how do we draw, who's drawing, what can we call a drawing, and what's our uh, vocabulary, if you like, and uh, space for drawing. Uh, this sits as a special display within the overall exhibition, and it will tour alongside the main exhibition, although occasionally it's toured on its own uh, to, to venues where there's been room to take a small, very specialist show uh, along, uh, and not the main overall exhibition. It has a separate submission process, selection panel, and it has an award of £2,000. The online entries are submitted by the 19th of June, and that does mean submitting digital images for the panel. Uh, because it's about working drawing, um, 
some of the values might be different than they are about thinking about drawings in their own right for exhibition. Um, and this panel of experts are used to looking at drawings online. So Ben Derbyshire, who's the non-executive chair of HTA Design, which is um, a practice devoted to housing, homes, uh, and other things, is a, a fabulous uh, selector. He was recent, until recently the president of the Royal Institute of British Architects. He's got phenomenal experience across the heritage sector as well. Uh, Andrew Grant uh, is a landscape architect and the founder and director of Grant Associates. Perhaps their most iconic work that many people will have seen uh, is the Bay of Trees uh, in Singapore. Uh, which is quite famously on all of the tourism uh, photos of Singapore. Um, so he's somebody who uses drawing to ideate, to plan, to communicate. So he is a practitioner communicating through drawing his designs, his ideas. Um, and we did at Drawing Projects UK, if you want to see some of his drawings, uh, present a show very early on in 2016 of drawings for a festival that he's a very involved in called the forest of imagination which is really about how do we embrace nature um within the city particularly in the historic city of, of bath uh, and our third selector is caroline gruer who is director of program at vna dundee which means she has oversight of all of the programs at vna dundee um, and caroline is a very experienced curator um so she has worked in the cultural sector for 20 years she began her career at the british institute of florence in italy and joined vna in london uh, where she worked across a major exhibition delivery and international touring exhibitions and was also head of exhibitions at design and so on um so she has a an extensive museum career uh and a particular interest again in drawing so they will look at drawings online in this separate process and um, for which drawings need to be registered with digital images uploaded by the 19th of June, so on a later date. This has a single entry fee because we think that some of the images may need to be related because of the nature of ideation and design processes. Um, and there is also, again, a, a, a lower entry fee for students to encourage their uh, commitment and exploration of drawing. So they're all viewed again anonymously. Uh, oh. They're selected on the basis of their merit um, alone and they're all viewed. So entrants, once you've submitted, they will spend a very intensive time together looking at the submission and will make decisions and then the selector drawings will be delivered to the collection centres across the UK or directly to Trinity Boy Wharf or the University of Dundee um, in order to be able to um, manage the uh, process for the publication because we also recognise that although you're submitting digital images uh, we frequently need to retake those images uh, and they're all done with one professional photographer uh, in the exhibition. You can just see to the right of this image some of the working drawings. You can see it during install because there's a nice big tube there for Slarendry Sartre's uh, drawing. Uh, and the working drawings are on the screens uh, to the other. So you can see it's a display within an overall exhibition. And this gives you another view of the other works in the show that range from everything from artist books, hand-drawn artist books, to works on passports, to and drawings made with digital media, uh, which you can't see terribly clearly. The whole exhibition is put together. The most important thing is the exhibition, the work getting uh, through the sifting and the seeing. And what I would say about the sifting and the seeing process is that, remember, these are people looking for other things. Their professional interest is in looking at drawing, at contemporary art and design and thinking about its place in the world. So there are quite frequently other things also happen by getting your work out uh, in front of selectors, but critically it's about, for us, it's about forming an exhibition, 
which can go on tour. And then we also have the awards event, which looks like this uh, on the Wednesday where we announce the awards and we don't tell anyone in advance. So we do like, if possible, for people to be there. Um, these are different images of the awards, different contexts. Um, and those are a working drawing panel on the right, uh, very much enjoying awarding those awards. You can see the busy private view. Um, again, you'll see if you know anything of the exhibition, you'll see that they'll probably get in multiple times. It's an exhibition where people test their drawing practice or their ideas through the process. Um, and that means that it's built a kind of community uh, around it over that 31 years. Uh, we produce an education pack and we've been working with Drawing is Free since 2020 when we went into lockdown uh, to produce an education pack so that we can reach through this process. So not just a publication which has everybody's work reproduced. So you have you receive a publication if you're in the show. Um, but also, and obviously it's spread widely across libraries and museums, uh, but we also produce an education pack, which is an interpretive pack, thinking about the different themes running through the exhibition and how those might benefit others to engage with drawing uh, and through drawing. Those education programmes take place in person, uh, both at Trinity Boy Wharf. They include everything from the director's floor talk through to drawing sessions with artists who are in the exhibition uh, and we also run online programs uh, which might this is a lockdown online symposia the one on, in october will be in person but we also produce films from time to time where we have funding so that we can share more information about some of the key works in the exhibition and you can find recordings of most of the events we hold uh, and some uh, produced films on the Drawing Project UK YouTube channel, um, which will give you an idea of different works that have been in the show. They're not perfect recordings because they're live recordings, mostly, apart from the film with Gary Lawrence and films with Ian McKeever, who is a selector. Um, but you will see, again from that, some idea of those things. We do have other opportunities that come in. This isn't a, an Evelyn Williams Award year, but it will be next year. Uh, where we have additional awards that come along um, in association with the exhibition, which provide other opportunities for solo exhibitions. And there will be um, opportunities that do come, we quite often during Projects UK programmes, out of uh, selected and unselected artists where it sees work uh, that is of interest. But this is a funded award which runs with the Evelyn Williams Trust and Hastings Contemporary and Drawing Projects UK as the custodians of this and the mentors to the realisation of a solo exhibition a year to 18 months after the award. Um, so really those are the summary is that um, the entry portals, there are two different entry portals. The website, which is a microsite of Drawing Projects UK, the Trinity Boy Wharf Drawing Prize website, has core information there, as do the entry portals. And we obviously have social channels, uh, both on X, but largely on Instagram, with a Drawing Projects UK and TBW Drawing Prize. And we have our hashtags, which you can see there. So really, it's the opportunity for questions, because I won't have covered everything. Um, and I will probably do some uh, conversations uh, where we share more information about the exhibitions and the findings. Uh, but I think if we open up to questions just now, which for some reason I can't quite see, um, then uh, it, we will get to your answers that you specifically had. And you're very welcome to put your hand up and come up on screen and or... Uh, to ask your question via the chat. And I know that we had a very early question about entering a video and a group of objects, which you probably are asking how to do it on the portal. Uh, the portal, if you're entering the main award, what you would do is submit a link and a, to an anonymized version of your uh, video. 
and you would submit instructions about it being seen with an object that you would need to submit in the reel unless you wanted to uh, do that a different way. But anything that's unconventional, unframed, and we're happy that it's unframed so long as it comes in protective packaging and you accept the risk that that might have, because sometimes it's better for drawing. You will have seen, in, even in the image we've got online here, there's a drawing in the middle, which is Byron on paper, which is not framed. Um, we work very carefully with a very extensive group of um, technicians who've been working on the exhibition uh, for some time. And that means that we're adept at handling things. And very occasionally things go wrong because paper is fragile or it's got uh, something that's inherently difficult uh, through its making that makes it fragile. So, but we're happy to to manage that. The most important thing is if you've got questions is to email tbwdp at parkerharris.com and they should get back to you. Um, occasionally it gets busy, but we will also have an intern working at Dundee who we may also be providing a link to so that she can also support um, some of the inquiries. This isn't the first submission with no digital drawings. We've always had an in uh, in person, in in the real submission. Uh, in lockdown, we went to a two-stage process, uh, but we still didn't feel comfortable selecting work without seeing it because the experience of seeing it online and seeing it in the real is incredibly different. And in last year, we ran a two-stage process only for international submissions. And again, we felt that when it came in, it was quite challenging in terms of seeing, of, of having been able to read the work in its comprehensive qualities. Um, so even though work might have got through to a second stage, a, a small proportion went through into the main exhibition. It's not that things didn't come through that weren't supported and celebrated, and indeed the second award winner was from New York, um, but this is an exhibition which we hear from artists. It's important your work is seen in the real, um, which for drawing we think is absolutely important it's seen in the real. And we know that that brings challenges, but we think that we've worked to minimise those challenges as much as we can. So if I go through, if I hope that answers the question, come back if it doesn't and pop, either pop a hand up or pop something back in the chat. Um, what mediums are accepted for the entries? Any medium is accepted for the entries. What we're asking you to do is consider whether you're making a drawing and you want that to be presented as a drawing to a panel who are going to be having a dialogue about whether each submission is a drawing. So one of the first things they discuss is what's a drawing, where are our um, tolerances for it? And sometimes they start by saying, I'm not going to have X in the show. And then by the end of it, they kind of persuaded themselves that actually this is a rather good drawing. Um, so it's a dialogue between the work that's submitted and their expertise and their dialogue between the three of them, because they, they all need, they need to agree what's coming in to the exhibition and they really need to agree on the awards. Um, but that's very much where and what we're doing is witnessing and seeing, and hopefully when they write something for the publication, they're telling us because they've reflected on it through practice of looking, seeing and experiencing all of the drawings, their take, their view, their insights on current drawing practice in response to the work that comes in. Um, so all mediums, uh, it can be, we have works in the current show on found books, on stitched on wool, uh, made on passports, made as videos. Um, there's a, a documentary film of a performance. There are all sorts of things. Not all selectors will have the same tolerances or views, and that's the point of having a different panel, although I would say I wouldn't second guess them too closely because you, they're always a surprise or two in there. Um, maximum dimensions are about practicalities. So we have a maximum dimension of two and a half metres 
in two dimensions, but please not two and a half metres in three dimensions, because we simply can't handle it, lift it, move it, store it. The dimensions are there for practical reasons, which is about how do we ensure we can move the work in and out of spaces, into the galleries that we're presenting it in and touring it to. Trinity Boy Wolf has a flexibility, it has big double doors and it has very high walls, but not all of our venues have exactly the same dimensions. And what we're trying to do is make a show that we celebrate as an exhibition first at Trinity Boy Wharf, but then goes out on tour so that more people can experience the work um, and we can build more educative engagement programmes around your work uh, as it goes on tour. Unframed drawings can come in a role, um, particularly if they're large and framed drawings are possibly best in a role. Sometimes they need to come flat because you would, um, it depends what the surface is. Um, so, but you'll have seen in that image of Sarah Dressart's very big drawing of uh, a ship shape um, or ship form, um, that that came in a role from Australia. So there are things that come in with that. Do make them, if they're coming in a tube, don't make them too tight. We can't get them out of the tube um, and think about the surfaces for that. So we're happy to to do all of that um, for you. Uh, the symposium will be open to anyone to attend, um, so it will be advertised. We don't know yet whether there'll be a small ticketing charge. We tend to put a small ticketing charge to encourage people to actually turn up um, because all of our events are largely sold out. So we, we find, we're trying to find the right way to make things accessible, but to ensure that by making them accessible, people don't make them unaccessible to other people. Um, so again, uh, that but the symposium is intended as a big celebration. In the past, we've sometimes done symposia and events as the work comes in to London so that we can uh, welcome people with and through drawing conversations there. But there will be events that roll through um, online and in person uh, for next year, particularly because it's a very big year for us. And we'd be looking at different ways to mark um, the 30th exhibition as we go through the year. Uh, framed work is transported from a collection point. We would recommend that you protect any delicate frames and corners. Um, it can be bubble wrapped. It's moved with professional transporters with blankets. Um, so ideally it's packaged, but in a sustainable way, if you can do that. Um, but so we, we end up with a lot of bubble wrap that goes to landfill. Um, so if you can think about, uh, using card, corrugated card, or just protecting the corners and any delicate frames, what we would say is that line wax frames uh, gessoed frames are quite delicate, so using cling film or some kind of wrap around them is helpful. I think you have to feel that you're confident in how you uh, send them in. Um, open exhibitions involve a lot of handling, and no matter how careful it is, it's, people have got hands, um, other frames come in. What we're also asking is that, I mean, what I mean is that if we're handling a work that's unframed, to the others we're very careful but we do gather quite a lot of drawing material uh, in that process so it's being confident about that but you'll see the works in the show are perfectly fine um, and they come through the process and they go back largely absolutely if they came in um, and so thinking about protective packaging is about how do you get it from A to B it's going into a dry place from a dry place usually if you've got rain and you are one of the collection centres that isn't a physical centre or you have to trans travel on transport with it, then you'll probably want to think about a different kind of wrapping for it. Um, does that answer the protective packaging or unwrap? I mean, ideally, we don't want a huge amount of bubble wrap, but we recognise there's some uh, need for protection depending on your work um, and how it comes in. 
the works, once they're selected, are insured for the whole programme and the tour. Um, so the minute they are selected, they're not insured during that first bit. You do need to make sure you've got your insurance for that. Uh, but everything is insured from the moment it comes in. You'll find on the submission registration details that you're entering an insurance value for the work. That has to be verifiable should anything happen. Um, but we're only asking for an insurance value. We do sell works through the show, but we're going to deal with that at a later stage because really it's only relevant to the people who get into the exhibition. We don't say that work has to be for sale. And in fact, for international artists, because you have to register for VAT to sell work in the UK, you might want to, we, we're finding ways to manage that. So there is guidance for you. But the most important thing is the exhibition is out here. People get to see the work and people collect in lots of different ways. Um, works. So that covers the insurance question. You've got lots of good questions this morning. Um, can the drawing be sent in multiple pieces of paper and reconfigured for viewing? It can. It needs to come in a really clear format that it is one work and it needs to come in a format that's easily laid out uh, for the panel. And bearing in mind that quite often things will get laid out uh, and then put back, laid out again uh, for them to see. Fiona handles the complex works that come in without frames. So Fiona might have some additional advice on that in a minute. I mean, we'd, we're happy to see composite things. We really need to know that they really are one work. Um, and I also think that you need to send really clear instructions about viewing and installation if they're coming in particularly unframed uh, and as one piece. But we see work that comes in in that format in each year. Um, and work gets through into the exhibition, largely each year in uh, those more unconventional forms. I would say framing is done to protect work. That's what frames are for. It's, it's about presentation to some degree, but most importantly, framing protects delicate works. Um, so that's the balance of, of things. If your work needs a shelf and it's an integral part of it, yes, you should probably deliver it with a shelf. Um, the shelves that you've seen in the exhibition are display methods that we provide and have made as bespoke um, display methods for the exhibition. And each year we do, once we've got the work together, if things, sometimes the selectors suggest that the work might need to be displayed in a different way than it's been presented because they really like the drawing, but maybe they don't like the frame or they think it needs a Perspex box or it needs all sorts of things. But we also, as in curating the show, are looking at how do we display things to the best that we can. Um, ideally, things come in with a clear capacity for us to fix to the wall. We don't want you to supply wall fixings unless they are unconventional to support the work. We want frames that we can mirror plate. And we don't want any projections on the back of any frames because you're seeing a lot of work and those projections tend to damage other work. Um, so, and they also damage people's hands when they're carrying and moving work around. So you'll see in the frequently asked questions or the rules and guidelines that we don't like clip frames because that tends to be raw glass, which can slice somebody's hand or indeed another work. Um, and metal frames also have the problem that they cut. Um, so please avoid those two methods of framing if you're going to frame. And please think about how things do go on the wall. I mean, sometimes frames are built with strap hangers. Sometimes they're built with, um, I'm going to forget the proper name for the recess wood that you slot them onto. That may be part of your aesthetic choice and practical choice about how it's presented. We'd expect to see those bits come with it, but not to be um, projecting out from the back of the frame, if possible. Um, and perspex frames will usually come in a, a small crate or just with something, a foam cut out or something to protect them. 
so that again they're not scratched and we can lift them up to see them without um that fragile um, surface touching another surface um in terms of uh so does that answer the wall fixing which is good thank you debbie for the thank you um the I wouldn't submit anything that isn't finished because they're not going to wait to see it finished. They're, they're looking at work um, and making decisions in a very focused space of time about work that's ready for exhibition. Um, so ready for exhibition means all sorts of things because drawing might be quite provisional, um, but, but they wouldn't be in a position to say you're in the show and then you change what they've seen. Um, so... I would recommend that all of the work is complete uh, in a in a way that you would expect people to see it. I mean, occasionally you get work back and rework it. That isn't a problem, but the work they will choose will be as it was presented to them on those days in July in London when they're all together, all three of them in the same space, seeing all of the drawings all at the same time, uh, and having that conversation. Um, but you might want to submit it because actually maybe it is finished. That's that's also part of the way these opens work for people to test uh, where they are with that piece of work. Uh, and perhaps that question about submitting an unframe work, if it gets selected, um, will the artist need to pick it up, frame it, and then deliver it again to the collection centres? The answer to that is we would negotiate that with you occasionally, yes, because the need for framing and that should sit with the artist. Um, but we sometimes arrange for that to happen because you might not be near where the things are. We'd rather we keep the work once we've got it because it's on our insurance. We are documenting it for uh, other things occasionally it does need to go out to be framed and occasionally a frame has a problem um, you know it hasn't been uh, made in a very strong way and it needs some um, repair or adjustment that's all managed within our team and it will be managed on an individual basis but we wouldn't anticipate um, a huge amount of toing and froing it's very rare um, you know once every other year there might be somebody that we need to reframe something or have framed um, and usually we will organise it and set that up and just liaise with you. Um, so those are, are all things that we will work with. And we there should be in the special international guidelines information on how to ship internationally. <laughs> You're responsible for all the customs declaration and any duty that comes with that. That's something that we can't manage. But the reason to collect it in at the University of Dundee is because it's easier to manage because we're frequently getting things that come um, from different places. Uh, and there is somebody there to handle and manage uh, any paperwork that comes with that. Quite a lot of the international work we anticipate might come unframed, but sometimes it will come framed. And it depends on the size and scale and how you're doing that. Um, so I think if you've got very specific questions, Cindy, I think if you would like to ask them uh, either by email, you can ask them to tbwdp at Parker Harris. Uh, it might be .co.uk or com. Uh, Fiona might have to check for me. Um, or to info at Drawing Projects, we can forward it on and then report out from there. Um, it's the one that Things have changed since Brexit, and it does make things slightly harder uh, to move things around. We have artists who do deliver, um, and we have artists who send uh, both framed and unframed work. But again, just ensuring that you've declared everything that you need to declare is where we are. But we're also saying, please, just do this with insurance values, and then we can work out anything uh, from there. That's brilliant, it's co.uk. Thank you very much, Fiona. Um, it's better if it's feasible to just send them framed and if it's appropriate that you need to um, protect the work. What I would say is we're quite good at handling paper uh, in particular. 
but please be considerate about what that paper might do to people and to others. Um, so if it's heavily oil laden or very dusty and not fixed, um, it's not going to come back to you in quite the same way, but that might be part of drawing. Certainly part of my drawings that when they travel, even when they're framed, the charcoal dust um, is never fully fixed. Um, but I think what you need to do is think about what's best for your work to protect its integrity, um, to present it as you want to present it to the panel and to indeed in an exhibition. Um, and But at the same time, if it's more practical, particularly for international submissions, uh, to send them unframed, that's something we can manage. And again, if aesthetically it's important, it's not framed, that's fine too. I mean, you'll have seen award winners who make drawings that just come in and roll um, and are not framed ever, because actually framing would really transform the surfaces. You would find them the same. We had drawings made on canvas in the exhibition this year. Again, they're not framed, they roll out. Um, and we have some things, uh, there's actually quite a small pastel drawing, um, which is not framed, which one might think should be framed because it's, it's um, an ochre pastel drawing, it's rather beautiful, beautiful surface, but actually and behind a frame reflection uh, would really transform the experience of it because it's rich uh, in terms of image and colour and surface. And so um, sometimes it's the right thing that came in in a very beautiful portfolio that just protects it. Um, and that's all very straightforward for us. And we're very good at hanging in different ways. Um, so I think it's your judgment call on the framing. Um, ideally things are because it's easier to handle and for us takes less time unwrapping and rewrapping in between the process of it being laid out first, second, third times, uh, etc. So again, if you've got very specific inquiries about a very specific thing, please ask the question. Uh, and I did say the videos need to be anonymized. Uh, so if you do have your name in the opening credits, it would be great if you take it out. We can put it back in if the work is selected um but that's um not it, it's just not fair if you like our aim is to share work without that information we do ask you to confirm it's your work and to authenticate but you do that by submitting in the box on the entry portal um you can also sign drawings on the back wherever you want to um the conversation about signatures and drawings is always a big one every year um, so I would think carefully about how you do that if you want to authenticate uh, on the front of a drawing. Uh, and if selected, uh, is it possible to contextualise the works during the programme? What we do is ask you to write about the draw. This is an exhibition about the drawings that are selected, unless you're in the Working Drawing Award. And occasionally for the Working Drawing Award, we feel that you might need an object or a documentation to clarify the role of that um, drawing in the process. Um, so that's, we haven't ever invited in objects, uh, but we have, they have purposely, not we, they have purposely selected a documentary image that went with the drawing because it made sense of the drawing. Um, so only within the Working Drawing Award would we contextualise with other work. However, during the public programmes, if you were invited to present within that, then that would be a moment to contextualise that work. And we like to know more about the work because we're talking to the public all of the time about the drawings and how they sit within the practice. But the publication has a, I'm going to say 200 word statement, it might be 300 word statement, and a small biography for everybody uh, in it, um, which is intended to give people an insight into that drawing in the context of an exhibition all about drawing. So I hope that makes sense. Um, but we do, if you go to the YouTube channel, you'll see conversations with people about how that drawing sits 
within their practice. Uh, you'll also see a suite of dialogue discussions where people are asked to just talk about one drawing and the drawing in the show, um, which is a particular thing, but it is very much um, part of the underpinning core for this, is to think about how do we talk about drawing, um, and that might be about its context to other practice, but it might also be very specifically about how we use the drawn language uh, within a drawing, about drawing, in drawing, a drawing of itself, in its own. I don't know if there are any more questions. I may have missed some. We are at an hour, so we've hit our time frame. Um, I can stop sharing so I can actually just see you for a minute to check there's nothing else uh, that people want to ask um, or to say. All I can say is we really look forward to seeing the drawings. We hope you will embrace the adventure of seeing drawings in the real. Um, it, it really makes a difference. And I know that that may seem hard to um, see from the perspective of making and submitting sometimes. But if you talk to um, many of the artists on the show, including people like Jeanette Barnes, who just said this is one of the only exhibitions where you see drawings in the real. Um, and it really does make a difference to understanding the work, to understanding its place in the context of the exhibition, and to understanding your relationship to your drawing. Um, so please, we look forward to seeing lots of drawings. Um, this is about permission for everybody to submit work for a panel to see who will be looking for gems and discoveries uh, that affirm the diversity, the scope, the quality of drawing in relation to the work that's submitted. And they're really looking forward to seeing work from across the world, from across the UK, um, and we really look forward to them meeting everybody through the whole process. So can I say a huge thank you for joining me? And Fiona, a uh, huge thank you to you for steering and co-piloting. Uh, and please, questions to Parker Harris, if they're practical in process, if there are other things, uh, do feel that you can ask via info at Drawing Projects, but really Parker Harris manage this part of the process so that we can then get to dealing with content and supporting the artists and the exhibition and all of the work around that as it goes forward. So thank you very much for joining. Lovely to see everyone this morning. Thank you.